I am the granddaughter of George Wilcox, Sheriff of Roswell in 1947. If this name sounds familiar, it's because George Wilcox was a sheriff contacted by William Mac Brazel who collected some of the crash debris just days after the 1947 Roswell incident. Wilcox then contacted Major Jesse Marcel and they all met at Brazel's home to investigate the material. Because these guys, they were just, they were the salt of the earth. I mean, it would be like you and I talking. They were very frightened. I mean, as far as I understand, the military threatened my family. Due to the fear that surrounded her family, Christine didn't really discover her grandfather's story until her 20s when she caught a glimpse of him on Unsolved Mysteries. That was her first encounter with the Roswell case. My second encounter was uh, the Prince of Liechtenstein. His name was Hans Autumn. He was interested in the Roswell crash and gave money to the, fun, I think it was a fund for UFO research in Washington, D.C. They called anybody, everybody that had anything to do with the, with the Roswell incident. And my mother was called, her sister Phyllis was called, my aunt. And they were, they invited, they said they could invite two guests. And my mother said, isn't that the craziest thing? And so I said, well, I want to go because at 24, all I could think about is I wanted to go to the Smithsonian. And I really thought this whole UFO thing was, I thought, well, that's just really crazy. I'm not going to go to that, but I'll go see the Smithsonian while you go do whatever you're going to do here. I went into this wanting to go to the Smithsonian, left really perplexed. It's crazy to not know something, and then all of a sudden you start hearing that your grandfather knew of a UFO crash. Wow. It's sad for me because you take really stellar, wonderful individuals and you have a situation like this and you put them in a situation that is where they're afraid. My grandfather, I never got to know him. He died two years before I met him. And, and I can tell you that my belief and my whole family's belief is that this affected him and he never got over it. On her trip to D.C., Christine met some very informing individuals. Jesse Marcel Jr. and Don Schmidt were among those who shed light on her grandfather's story. However, two others stood out over the rest. I met Glenn Dennis, who was the mortician in Roswell, and my family knew him very well. And he was the most interesting one to me because I said, what, what's up with a mortician? Well, he had apparently had calls for small uh, caskets. I met Frankie Rowe, who said, my, she and I were sitting in the room together. She said, my father was out at that site. He was a fireman. And she said, he saw bodies. And he said that there was one that was still walking around. I thought, oh my gosh, this is, this isn't, this is real. If Christine, who currently lives in Phoenix, Arizona, had any further disbelief about the presence of UFOs, then her own sighting in 2007, 10 years after the Phoenix Lights, removed all doubts. This would be over what we call South Mountain, kind of near South Mountain vicinity. And I saw, okay, I'm thinking one, two, three, four, five orbs, and that's the best I can call them, perfectly lined up, perfectly lined up. The fifth one was bobbing. It was bobbing, it went in and out, and it just bobbed. Today, I'm convinced. Thank you.